It is Monday. It's the 26th of May. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center, live from Hong Kong. Our top stories today. Egyptians are heading to the polls to elect a new president. Polling stations have been open for about two hours now. It is the first presidential vote since Mohamed Morsi was toppled by the military last left. year. Now Voting will be open for the rest of today and Tuesday. Let's get you more on this from CNN's Reza Sai, who joins us now from near a polling station in Cairo. And so, Reza, some people are saying this is all a foregone conclusion. Well, it is. I think the outcome is certainly that many people say uh, Abdul Fattah. All right, sounds good, Reza. Thank you very much for that, Reza Saya. There, live for us from Cairo, in Thailand, an endorsement and a warning. The Ar army chief says the king has appointed him as the head of the ruling military council following last week's coup. General Prayuth Chanocha says his junta will carry out political reforms, but gave no date for when elections might be held with arrest. We are waiting for official results from Ukraine's presidential election, but one candidate has claimed victory, billionaire businessman and former politician Petro Poroshenko. He's expected to speak any moment now. Early results suggest he won more than half the vote in Sunday's poll, yet many people did not vote in regions where pro-Russian movements have taken hold. It is the first election to find a replacement for the pro-Russian president, Viktor Yanukovych. He was forced out of office in February. CNN's Nick Payton Walsh is live from Donetsk. And Nick, before we get to that, we are hearing reports of uh, gunmen storming Donetsk airport. What more do we know about that? Well, that's according to the spokesman for the airport who said Thank that about you. three o'clock. Thank you, Nick Payton Walsh, live for us from Donetsk. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. It's clearly a big day for several governments around the world. Up next, we look at India's new leader. Stay with us right here on CNN. You're watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Hello, everyone. I'm Monita Rajpal. The 15th Prime Minister of India will take his oath of office at a ceremony in the capital later today. Narendra Modi will become the leader of the world's biggest democracy. His BJP is the first party in three decades to win an absolute majority. The majority to rule. ceremony will be held at the presidential mansion in New Delhi. Sumnima Udas joins us now live from the capital. And Sumnima, we understand that uh, there has there would essentially be a lot of security. Uh, give us an idea now what we can expect in terms of the arrivals. That's right, Monita. All the guests have arrived, at least the, uh, the Prime Minister from New Delhi. Some of the other stories we're following here at CNN News Center. European Union voting has ended with a more conservative European Parliament. Far-right parties in France, Denmark and Austria appear to have made huge gains, but established pro-EU parties are expected to remain the largest groups in Parliament. Police in northwest China have arrested more than 200 suspected terrorists. That's according to state media. The arrests are part of a crackdown in the volatile Uyghur region after a series of attacks there, including this market bombing on Thursday. Ethnic tensions between Muslims in the region and Han Chinese residents have boiled over into deadly clashes in recent years. A manhunt is underway after Saturday's deadly shooting at the Jewish Museum in Brussels. Belgian police have released a haunting surveillance video. It shows a man approaching the building, opening fire with an AK-47 and walking away. The suspected gunman then disappeared on foot. Two Israelis, a French woman and a Belgian museum worker, were fatally shot. Oscar Pistorius has reported to a psychiatric hospital as part of a month-long mental examination. The Olympian is being treated as an outpatient per judge's orders. His uh, trial has been postponed until June 30th. Disorder. Well, authorities in California say the man who killed six people on Friday had planned the attacks for more than a year. Elliot Roger went on a rampage in a college community near yeah, Santa Barbara, CNN, California. Isla Vista, California. You're watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. We'll be right back. You're watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Pope Francis is in Jerusalem, the last stop on a three day visit to the Middle East. Today, the pontiff has been praying at the Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall. It's considered Judaism's most holy site. The Vatican says the Pope's trip is about faith, 
not politics, but Pope Francis has already made several pointed comments about peace in the Middle East, and later he'll meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Vatican correspondent Delia Gallagher is traveling with the Pope. She joins us now. Delia, there has been a lot of talk about how symbolic his meetings have been. What is that element of symbolism that would resonate, especially among those who need to see change and peace in the region? Well, Monita, I think one of those moments has just happened, in fact. All right, Delia, uh, thank you. Delia Gallagher there, uh, live for us from Jerusalem. We want to take you now live to Kiev, Ukraine now. And billionaire businessman Petro Poroshenko has claimed victory in the country's presidential election. He's speaking right now. Let's take a listen. Yesterday, I thank those who I managed to meet. Uh, I guess the person who won uh, the first, uh, who has claimed victory in uh, Ukraine's presidential election, billionaire businessman. Uh, uh, Petro Poroshenko. He's also known as the Chocolate King uh, in Ukraine. He won more than 55 percent uh, of the vote there in the first round. Uh, that's according to uh, exit polls. He has said that he wants to forge closer ties with the EU. The big question though right now is how will Russia, how will Moscow uh, respond to the win uh, in Ukraine? Uh, they have said, the president there, uh, Mr. Putin has said in the past, Prime Minister Putin Putin has said that he will respect the uh, decision or the outcome of this election, but we're still waiting to hear what that reaction will be. You're watching CNN News Center. I'm Monita Rajpal at CNN Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us. I'll update you the headlines in just a few minutes.